If you're looking to create a beautiful flower garden without breaking the bank, then you're in the right place. Gardening doesn't have to be an expensive hobby. With a little creativity, you can have a stunning garden that won't destroy your budget. In this video, we'll talk about how to save money with seed starting, plant propagation, prop lifting. Okay, this one's controversial, but I'll tell you when I think it's okay and when it's not. I'll also talk briefly about buying wholesale starter plants, which is something that I often do. Lastly, I'll tell you some ways to get discounts on plants from your Welcome to my greenhouse. You already know that seed starting is a cost-effective way to get many plants. Seed packets are available everywhere and usually for just a few dollars. Even if you go to a specialty seed company, their seed packets are still relatively inexpensive when compared to buying full-grown plants. The one negative of seed starting is that you have to have some patience. Growing from seeds takes time, but especially with perennial plants, it's well worth it. Did you know that you can get seeds for free? That's right. There are free seeds available at seed exchanges at many botanical gardens, and even libraries offer free seed programs. You can also ask your neighbors and friends who garden if they have any extra seeds that they'd be willing to share. Once you have your seed, you just need some seed trays and a growing medium. I recycle my seed trays from year to year. If you have containers from last year's flowers, go ahead and use them. They'll work just fine. You can also look for used seed trays on Facebook Buy and Sell. Lastly, if you have a mom and pop garden center near you, check to see if they have a flower pot recycling box. My local nursery does, and there are always tons of pots and trays to choose from. You can also ask on Facebook Buy and Sell and other social media platforms for trays that people are getting rid of. If you've ever started your garden late, you may already know that big box stores actually throw away their unsold seeds at the end of the planting season. If you want to save money, ask the garden center manager when they'll dispose of the seeds. Then return around that time and see if you can get the seed packets at a deep discount. You can store any unused seeds in your refrigerator for the following season. You may get a lower germination rate, but I've had good success with seed saving even after two or three years. Wholesale plants are also a great way to save money. I buy my annuals wholesale, plant what I want in my own garden, and then pot up and try to sell the remaining plants. For example, this is a tray of 250 petunias that I only paid $28 for. Once you add on shipping and tax, it was probably about $32. These are starter plants, so I'll have to repot them and grow them out a bit before they can be planted. I also have trays of sun patients and dahlias. These starter plants were close to a dollar each, but back before I was buying wholesale, I used to pay close to $6 a plant for sun patients. They're my favorite annual. I just love them so much. I was so happy to find them sold wholesale. If you're interested in buying wholesale, you can search the internet for wholesale starter plants. Just be careful of the shipping costs. Some wholesalers charge an arm and a leg if you aren't receiving an entire box truck, which of course would negate any savings. Also, not every wholesaler will sell to the public. Many only sell to people in the business of selling plants or landscape design. Wholesale plants are great for fundraisers. If you're interested in having a plant fundraiser, subscribe and I'll make a video on how to do that. Plant propagation is another way to save money on your garden. This is the process of taking cuttings from a plant and growing them into new plants. All you need is a healthy plant, some pruning shears, and some rooting hormone. Here you can see some roses that I propagated last fall. They'll be ready for planting soon. I also have some gardenias and a butterfly bush. If you're interested in learning more about plant propagation, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to be doing a video on gardenia propagation soon. As with seed starting, plant propagation also requires patience, but I find it super exciting. Prop lifting is a newer trend that has gained popularity in recent years. What is prop lifting, you ask? It's when you take the word propagation and smash it together with the word shoplifting. It's the act of taking plant cuttings from public spaces such as parks or even your workplace and then growing them in your own garden. While it's important to be mindful of local laws and regulations, prop lifting can be a fun and free way to add plants to your garden. I would always suggest asking before you take a cutting of a plant that doesn't belong to you. I would never walk onto someone else's property and just start hacking into their plants, and I don't think that you should either. 
That is a great way to end up infamous on some town Facebook page and get shunned by your neighbors. If you see something amazing somewhere, just ask for permission. Most of the time, people will say yes. Now, there is one exception to this rule. What about abandoned properties? Near me, there are so many banks that have closed. Now, I'm not sure what that means for the economy, but many of them had some nice landscaping. Currently, these plants are not being cared for at all. Some of them may actually benefit from a pruning. If you're going to prop lift, be careful not to damage the mother plant, leave it looking ugly, or take more than what you need or what the plant can support. I think prop lifting is okay if you can leave the mother plant in better shape than you found it and get some cuttings for yourself. Okay, so here's an example of a time where I think it would be okay to prop lift. This is a bank that has been out of business literally for years. Nothing has reopened, there hasn't been any movement on the property at all. And when you're looking at the landscaping, what do you see? It's covered in weeds, there's no irrigation, things are dying. I feel like if you prop lifted and took a few branches of the rhododendrons or the euonymus or some junipers and you didn't make the plant look worse, you might actually be improving the health of the plant and then if somebody ever does buy this property, in the long run, it would be a benefit for them. Another way to create a stunning garden while saving money is to wait for sales at your local big box stores. Hit their clearance rack hard and don't be afraid to ask the manager for an even better discount. I've had good success with this, but every store is different. This also tends to work best when stock is changing or the season's coming to an end. Here's an example. This pearl bush was for sale for $27. It's a spring bloomer and it was still for sale in late summer. I asked the manager what he could sell it to me for and he only charged $5. I once bought an entire cart of perennials that were in poor shape for only a dollar each. I repotted them, pruned them back, and overwintered them. This season, they look great. The only negative here is that sometimes clearance plants die. Most of mine came back and looked great, but I did lose a few. Okay, and here it is, my best tip for saving money on your plants. Buying plants from a local backyard grower can be a great way to save money while still getting healthy and beautiful plants. Backyard growers, like myself, often sell their plants at a lower price than nurseries because they don't have the overhead costs of running a business. They also tend to grow plants that are better suited to the local climate and soil, which means that they're more likely to thrive in your own garden. Additionally, Buying from a local grower supports the community and reduces the environmental impact of transporting plants long distances. Creating a stunning flower garden on a budget is possible with a little creativity and some know-how. Buying your plants from a backyard grower is a great option. Also, by starting your plants from seed, getting free seeds, buying clearance plants, propagating plants, and even prop lifting, you can have a beautiful garden that won't break the bank. Happy gardening, my friends! Thanks for watching today. This is a new channel and it would really help me grow if you would like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day.